there. Welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. So glad to be with you today, my friend. I hope everything is just going great for you right now. And I think you're going to appreciate the program today. Uh, we're dealing with a subject that thankfully not everybody has to deal with, but too many people do have to deal with it. And probably you know someone who is living in a very difficult situation. And my guest today, Dr. April Grisita, I think, I will have her tell us how to pronounce that uh, when I bring her on the set. Uh, but you know, my audience knows how I can annihilate somebody's name, so this, this is nothing new. Uh, but she's written a book called Me and Bad Boys. And if that title doesn't grab you, I don't know what would, but we're dealing with really abuse uh, between marriage partners for the most part. But a lot of people are living together now without being married, which is not a good idea. And um, so you've got a lot of abuse in there too. And she's very, very qualified to do this. And her book, I like it a lot because she's gotten the opinions and ideas from other great people in the same industry. Um, she's been a pastor, I believe, for 21 years. And she and her husband pastored the New and Lively Hope Church here in Central Florida. So I'm anxious for you to meet her. And I think we're doing one of the strangest recipes I remember. And uh, Wanda found it in a cookbook. And let me tell you something about Wanda. She, she's been with me 20 years, okay? But she, she really is a good homekeeper. Her house is immaculate. She's very good at decorating a house. She could come into your house probably and give you some good ideas. And uh, great in the kitchen, you know, cook from scratch. And this recipe shocked me because it's made up of Jiffy cornmeal and vanilla pudding. I, I thought, Wanda, I can't believe that you ever did that. But she did it. She tried it, took it to a sick uh, neighbor. And I think he's doing much better. I'm not sure the cornbread healed him, but uh, he, he really liked the cornbread. So we're going to give it to you. But I want to again offer you the Red Letter Words of Jesus. This is such an awesome book. And it's yours for that gift of $15 to the program. And so you can uh, use your credit card by calling 1-800-229-0059 or write to me at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And we will get it right out to you. We've sent hundreds and hundreds of these out, but we're still getting orders for them. And as long as as uh, we have some left, we will send them to you. So appreciate that if you can help us that way. And I've joined Wanda over here. Hello. And I can't, like I said, I can't imagine you finding a recipe with this. I know. Because she's a cook from scratch it's, person. It, but it, it's true, <clears throat> but it is really, really delicious. And I told you, uh, when I made it for my neighbor, he fell and broke his hip and his femur. And so... He was in pretty tough shape. I made him the Mexican soup that we made last week, and I took him the cornbread. I think I did brownies or... I think he died. Uh, thought he died and went to heaven. He did. He said, <laughs> I came in with a peach cobbler, and he goes, um, can I marry you? And I'm like, no, no, no. But anyway, no. This I'll just is, be a good neighbor. I'll right. be a great neighbor. Okay. So this is, can't get any easier, guys. This is two boxes of your Jiffy cornbread, two small boxes of your instant vanilla pudding, and you're probably thinking, oh my, this is not going to taste so good. I know, that's just shocked me. But well, it's you a different this, flavor. Tell them about the uh, recipe, I mean the book. You got this. Okay. I love the Collingsworth family. Oh Their music gosh. is, I think, great. Their harmony is awesome, and she plays the piano like She no might other. be the best piano player in Christendom. She's amazing. She so great. it is really their recipe. They call it something different. I cheated. I hope they don't get mad at me for using the recipe, but I love it. And thank you for it. If you are listening, thank you for this recipe. <laughs> yeah, we love you. Play the piano the for us. Cookbook. But um, really, all you do is you're just going to take this. I'm just going to stir these two together while you mixed up two yeah, eggs. Two eggs and a cup of and milk. A cup of, that's all it is, people. This is it. And you can, I made this for my family. I had, you know, seven people that came to my house for dinner and I made the cornbread and that's what they ate. They ate my cornbread, all, all of it. And then so. That is so amazing. Yeah, it truly, truly is. So I'm just going to mix this around really until mm -hmm. it kind of incorporates in it. Well, now, I'm just going to warn you, there's different types of cornbread you can make. You can make it with cheese, you can make it with jalapeno, however you, mm -hmm. however you want it, or green chilies. You know, you can do a lot with cornbread. This is a, this is 
I have to say a sweeter cornbread because it would be with. Oh yes. But if you make something hot like like a hot soup, a hot spicy soup or mm -hmm. something, it's always a nice side dish. So I'm going to make a little well and you can pour that right in. All right of in, it? All of it, yeah. I don't know, we're going to be daring today. We're going to pour all uh -huh. of it in there. So I'm just going to mix this well. And if you don't want to order the recipe, it's yeah. two boxes of Jiffy Corn Mix, two boxes of vanilla pudding. Two eggs. Two eggs and a, a cup, cup of, of milk. milk. And you preheat your oven to four, uh, 400. 400. And about 12 to 15 minutes. Now if you want to, I already I went ahead and sprayed this yeah. earlier, but if you want to get the cornbread over okay. and cut a piece for yourself and tell me what you think. Well, it's awfully good looking. What would be great Very with some pretty. tea. If you're, like I like coffee, so coffee would be my choice of who, beverage, but. Who doesn't love cornbread? S Stephanie and I, and I have talked so often, that it's just a shame you can't smell some of these, because this, Ooh, it's got a nice consistency. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's a little different consistency, I think, in some of the other cornbreads that I've made, but um, it's really, I really, could live really a million good. years and never think of putting vanilla pudding in cornbread. Well, the other thing, too, it's that I'll share with you and is innovative. that innovative. if you ever made cookies and they kind of go flat, and you may just wonder why, so people mm. add more flour, then they get tasting more flour, but if you just add a package of vanilla instant pudding, it takes care of that, and they come out plump and nice and yummy, trust me. I've done it over the years, so. Well, did you figure that out by yourself? Yeah, don't ask me why, how, I just I know it, because sometimes to do you it. have a cookie recipe and you're kind of disappointed because it spreads out all over the pan. Well, and I've, that brings it together? I've seen these beautiful cookies that look gorgeous. I mean, mm -hmm. plump, juicy, nice, but they taste like flour. It's so much flour, and I know why they get it plump like that. But So you don't add, you don't add more flour, just add some vanilla? Add a box of... The, if, if you like a nice, sweet cornbread, this is, this is what you want. Absolutely. And uh, notice the size of pan this is. Yeah, it's a 13 by 9. Wh yeah. When she was uh, by putting this pan. one together, I said, that's an awfully big pan, but... That's what it requires. It does. It really does. Absolutely. So we're calling it Charlie's Cornbread. Um, if you want a recipe and you didn't get the information, that's uh, going to be coming up on your screen, but also the ways that you can get the recipe. Mm -hmm. There are several ways. Find the one that's best for you. And then I'm going to meet my new friend, April. And I really think you'll want to, if you can, sit down, have a cup of tea, and listen to what she has to say. It's very important. So stay right there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. All right, uh, my guest is doctor and a pastor, April. Okay, give me your name. Grisetta. <laughs> oh, I made it too hard. Grisetta. Grisetta. Okay. Well, welcome. It's and, good to be uh, here. Congratulations on your book. Thank you. Me and Bad Boys in a few minutes will be putting up information where you can learn more about her church. And uh, what city is it located in around here? It is in Holiday, Florida. Holiday, okay. Yeah. Um, and... You've been in the ministry 20 years. Is the church 20 years old? The church is 10 years. I've been in ministry about 30. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you are a TV host on yes. this network. Yes, I am. And it's mm -hmm. called, uh, the Bounce program's Back. called Bounce Back. Yes. And it's on Monday night? It's on uh, Monday at 1130. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is a counselor, and you deal with those kind of situations on that show. Uh, yes, okay. and, and much, much more, a lot of about addictions and all kind of real life issues. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, mm -hmm. uh, this is about intimate partner violence, yes. which could be a married couple or people living together. Yes. And uh, it's quite prevalent, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> very prevalent. It's a lot of, uh, of a lot of this book from your experience in ministry and did you ever experience anything like this? I know there's more than just beating someone up. 
Right. I've heard that emotional is just bad as, and psychological yeah. is just about as bad as the physical. Yeah, the bruises will go away, but those words that hit the heart, they're like uh, arrows hitting us. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go away so easily. Mm -hmm. What prompted you to write the book? Um, it was part of my doctorate work. I received my doctorate in ministry, and uh, I did the whole thing on intimate partner violence, and then I just took bits and pieces, and then I put in my own personal experience in the book because I have been in many abusive relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Okay. Let me counsel Here comes you. The goods. Here comes the goods. <laughs> um, what led you to that type of person? Because you said you'd been in more than one. Yeah. Now, and now you're on a counseling side now, yes. so you can tell us. I uh, always went for the bad boys. I don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> Maybe I wanted to rescue them. Maybe I wanted to fix them. But. You know, I always went for the bad boys, and especially if they didn't do any prison time, I really wasn't interested. <laughs> oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> I know. Oh, okay. Like, you're looking for a husband. Well, he, he better have been in prison. Or yes, at least yet. five years. <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of the genesis of this book? Uh, yes. Um, I had a lot of childhood sexual abuse, and I don't know. I guess I was kind of a hot mess, hopefully. <laughs> no. And I received a lot of healing from the Lord over the years, but... You know, yeah. there's so many people who have sat in that chair right there with a similar story. And mm -hmm. then you see the vibrant joy that yeah. they have now that yeah. only God could give. Only God. Yeah. And this is the seed. This kind of behavior is the seed for alcohol, mm -hmm. drugs. It's, uh, it's going to take you somewhere. On both sides, I drank to medicate all my pain as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Heavy, heavy drinker at one point in my life. Well, I've often thought, I don't know, if, if a husband or somebody hit me one time, once, I might forgive once, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I wouldn't hang around to get it, get it more, than, more than that. What is the mindset that causes someone to stay? Oh, they really want to believe that he will change. And, you know, usually there's two sides to the abuser, uh, the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And she really wants to believe the good guy is going to remain. And unfortunately, he doesn't remain. <laughs> but he, some of them are very charming, right? Very charming and uh, very loving. And we just hold on to that side. And maybe he'll be that way again. All I have to do is be perfect, and he'll be like that. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, what are the... These guys are great deceivers, Very. too. They're, they're, like you said, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Um, what are the clues in the courtship? Mm -hmm. Great, great question. Um, they're usually very jealous, and they want to know your whereabouts at all times. And I would also look to see if they've been in prior abusive relationships, because it tends to repeat itself. Mm -hmm. So those are very telltale signs to be looking for. I think what you said was just a, a great benefit to a lot of, oh, a lot so. of people. Yeah. Um, there's a real control. A lot of power and control, they, they crave and, that. And did, in, did any of your situations, they try to alienate you from your family, from your friends? Yes, isolation was a big part of uh, that ordeal. You know, mm -hmm. didn't want me really talking to my mother or my friends because they would say, why don't you just leave the guy already, you know? Mm -hmm. And he knew that. Mm -hmm. um, to some men, uh, male-female relationship, that for the male, control is part of it. Um, and sometimes they take the scripture oh, yes. and twist it on that. Yes, there's <laughs> a lot of women remain in captivity due, due to a bondage to certain scriptures taken out of context. Uh, so let me make something clear. In Ephesians, where Paul addresses husband and wife, first he says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church. Yes. Now, that's a big order. Yes. It's a big order. And because Christ gave his life for the church. Yes. And then later on it says, For wives, submit yourselves to your own husband. Well, you got a guy that treats you as Christ loves the church. There's not going to be a problem. <laughs> no problems whatsoever. No problems. So don't twist that one. And the uh, Bible says God hates divorce. 
But the scripture doesn't say to stay in the relationship and let them beat the pulp out of you. God hates violence as well. Yes, he does. You know, yes. people leave that piece off. Mm -hmm. you know. Okay, uh, what do you say to a wife who comes to you and you're very qualified? Uh -huh. And like I said before, in the, uh, she's used other references besides her own education, her own experience. Um, so if someone comes to you and says, there seems to be a pattern here mm -hmm. and I feel I'm locked in, what do I do? Well, I would tell her that I was concerned for her safety because that's first priority there. And if she had children, I'd say, I'm concerned for your children as well. You know, I wouldn't just tell her pack up and leave because, you know, many times they get killed when they up and leave their abusers. So, you know, I, I would listen, understand, and validate what she was feeling. That's how I would approach it. You know, you're not the first one to sit in that chair and say, don't just pack up and leave. Uh -huh. um, I have Dr. Uh, David Clark on here every month, mm -hmm. and he wrote a whole book. Uh -huh. it's, it's a book just about this size on what the planning and what you need to do before yes. you leave. And uh, if any of you are interested in that, you can contact me through website or whatever, and I can tell you what it is. Um, so uh, this client has kind of poured her heart out mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. Do you take her step by step? Um, I would um, initiate a safety plan um, before she ups and leaves, you know, ha making sure you have the right documents in place. And you have a safety plan in place before you just up and leave. That's what Dr. Clark says. Yes, Dr. Clark The Bible Clark says, says now the guy. mouth of two witnesses <laughs> shall a thing be established. Yes, yes. Um, and um, does any, do any of the abusers come to you for help? Um, I've had a few. And um, some of them have been in what they call a batterer intervention program. And uh, not too much success there, I'm sad to say. Well, I've often thought that women fall to the cross, kneel at the cross, a little more easier than men. Um, mm -hmm. Well, we made our bed, now we got to lie in it. Types right. of things and protect the family uh, ideal. You know, so we stay in these types of relationships for these mm -hmm. very reasons. Do the men ever know there's something wrong with me and I need help? Uh, sometimes they acknowledge that and they mm -hmm. do get help, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but they really have to want to surrender that power and control to get it. And the only place you can surrender it is at the cross. At the foot of the cross. Really for sure. Yes. Uh, were most um, of these men raised by abusive fathers? Uh, some have, but not all. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, it's a phenomenon, I just, you know, that power and control, I mean, people really, <laughs> the men really like to have that over their woman. I, mm -hmm. Maybe they saw that growing up in their home, that that's the way things are supposed to be. You right, know, I woman, think that. Woman, you cook and, uh, you know, and mm -hmm. listen to everything I got to say, and that's that. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we're going to put her website up, and um, you can... Um, Get the book there. Is it? Uh, no, Amazon.com. Amazon.com, yes. okay. Uh, but we do have the website up for uh, if you're in the area of their church and yes. ministry and you want to find out uh, more about it. Um, you talk about these abuses, physical abuse, emotional abuse, psychological abuse, mm -hmm. economic abuse. Yes. So I'm <laughs> controlling the checkbook, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's a cycle of tension building, acute battering, and then remorse. Is that that's, that's a, a cycle of violence? Yes, and it, they all follow that pattern. You know, they explode, and then they promise that they're going to change, and then the tension mounts, and then they blow up again. It's just uh, cyclical. It How long happens. does the remorse last? Uh, <laughs> that, that varies, but not too not too long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. And the um, flowers, they always come with that, I call them the dreaded flowers. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. I promise I'm going to change, honey. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I'm hoping for your answer on this one. Uh, Have you seen some real turns and families were saved and marriages were saved? I have to honestly say that I, um, I have not seen any man turn. Mm-hmm. Not to say that that can't happen because God's delivering power is very real and if people really want help, God can come in and intervene and save that family unit. Okay, now if, if you have helped uh, a wife get away safely and kind of established, she's still this broken 
yes. person who might go back if she doesn't have some help mm -hmm. and get a understanding of really what's going on. The average woman leaves six to seven times before she makes a final break. Say that again. Six to seven times before she makes the final break. She leaves back and she keeps going back. Yeah. So that's the normal, actually, that they do run back to their abusers. Well, doesn't something tell her after the third time that something's not... Is it because he knows how to turn on the charm? He really knows how to turn on that charm, and she really wants to believe it. <laughs> and he tells her it'll never happen again. She just mm -hmm. keeps going back for it. Uh, I put this on my notes. I must have gotten it out of your book. Forgiving from a safe distance. Yes. <laughs> you can forgive from afar. You know, sometimes the church says, you know, just stay and work it out or pray, have more faith. But you know what? That's really maybe putting her in more uh, danger. So mm -hmm. she can forgive from afar, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, until he gets help. Can you think of one? I should ask you this before the show. Can you think of one uh, woman who really went the length and she became that vibrant person that God wanted her to be from the beginning that I am that woman awfully yes you are yes you are <laughs> yes I am that woman <laughs> yeah you you got a lot of joy <laughs> yes I do I can tell that. have you helped others get to that point uh, I've helped them along the way a lot of them have returned to their abuses and some have not so mm -hmm. praise the Lord <laughs> mm -hmm. well some of them stay away a long time and then and then go back hoping that maybe time healed all wounds, that kind of thing. Well, yeah. with your experience, um, and someone would come to you, can you go to the heart of the thing very quickly? Figure out? I, in these types of cases, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I have, a, the Lord has given me great discernment, especially in this particular area. Mm -hmm. I can smell a wolf, a wolf from afar, <laughs> okay? <laughs> what was the point in your, because you, you, had many kinds of abuses. Yes. There's, there's, there's more than physical and the emotional and psychological. Mm -hmm. um, what period of time did it take when you decided at some point to assess the whole situation and and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Jesus and believe him mm -hmm. and what he said, what he can do for me. Was mm -hmm. there a point after that that you could look in the mirror and say I'm really whole. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, when I left that abusive relationship, I was suffering from clinical depression. So uh, getting away from that toxicity, um, I, I began to heal rather quickly. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. getting away from that and listening to other people who have been through uh, that particular ordeal. And uh, God has brought great healing to my heart. So I can say that, you know, after oh, I Oh, your face says it. <laughs> yes, I'm a happy camper today. <laughs> she smiled ever since she got here. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, that, um, that makes a lot of sense, that you can sit there and know that the person sitting across the desk was you. Yes. Fall back. Yes, and I can now comfort them with the same comfort that I received from mm -hmm. God. Okay, after they come to you, give me the formula to that wholeness, to, to where the woman just, she finally realizes, yeah, this, this is better, you know, I, I feel freer and I can laugh more and mm -hmm. all. Uh, what steps do they take? I know you pray with them and okay. all that, but the Bible says good understanding give us mm -hmm. favor. If they can understand what took them to accept yeah. that at all. Yes, education is a very important piece in all of mm -hmm. this. A matter of fact, my whole doctorate, I did a psychoeducational support group uh, for women who have been abused, and they all got better after attending that group. Their PTSD symptoms came down, and their anxiety level came down. So having a good support group is vital in the healing process here. That, I makes, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, and you say education. Yes. They, they might discover abilities and mm -hmm. gifts that they have they never knew they were there. Yeah building that self-esteem back up again because they're so broken and don't feel like they can make it on their own, you know, and helping them in that area. You know, what's interesting here, these aren't all uneducated women. That is correct. A lot of this goes on in your very wealthy homes. Yes. And in the homes of corporate executives. 
I thought it was a normal way of life. I grew up in a very chaotic home. So this just seemed normal to me. This mm -hmm. didn't seem out of the ordinary mm -hmm. uh, until I start getting very sick on the inside, you know, and I had to make that change. Mm -hmm. I had that aha moment, if you will. You know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you ever kept track of the percentage of women that come back, go back to the abuser? Well, like I said, six or, they go back six or seven times, the normal woman, back and forth to the mm -hmm. abuser. Do you have any idea of a percentage, no matter how many times they went back, but when they do finally make that clean break? I don't have the data on that today, but uh, I can certainly look that up It would for be you. interesting <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. since, since they go back so often. Yeah. Uh, when you think of God's ideas for marriage, mm -hmm. what it's supposed to be, Yes. This is Satan's way of distorting and wrecking it. it. Yeah. It's not how God made covenant, the mm -hmm. covenantal relationship to be. Mm -hmm. You know. It's supposed to be the richest possible relationship here on earth. That's, yes. that's for sure. Well, it's obvious, obvious that God has um, called you mm -hmm. into this work. And sadly, it, it does exist in the church, doesn't it? It's, it's prevalent in the church. You know, and there are many broken women sitting there in the pews and not receiving any help and afraid to even go to the pastors because they'll say, just go pray about it or have more faith or perhaps you, you provoked them. You know, so she sits there broken and not receiving healing. Well, I'm glad there is help. And we've had this uh, website up on the screen for quite a while. And your program, which is on this network on Monday nights. Mon Monday morning, 1130. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Oh, in the morning. Okay. Yes. And it's called Bounce Back, and you, you deal with some of these issues from yes, time to time. Yes, right? I've done several shows on intimate partner violence and how the church is to respond if they have that in their church. Oh, well, it's very valuable. Yeah. Thank yeah. you uh, for your book, and thank you for the things you teach me. My guests teach me. They keep me in <laughs> the education mode all the time, and it's I love wonderful. it. It's wonderful. All right. Thank you for being with us, and... I have no doubt in my mind that some of you know exactly what we've been talking about and you're living it and there is hope. And uh, if you want to contact that or contact me, I'll get you in touch with her. And God can guide you through to a very peaceful, joyful life. It does exist. And please join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.